to another episode of Mark Gutzler, Man Gutzler, and today I am at a location <laughs> with my good friend O'Darian that I talked about, and today we're going to be doing a podcast. The question that I would have for you is, have you ever wanted what it would be like to do a podcast? And this would be a good learning experience for you guys out there, and this is my, like I said, my good friend O'Darian, I, knew, I told you we are going to do this, so if you don't mind... Um, tell a little bit about yourself. Um, so, my name is Odarian, of course, like you said. Um, I, I have a podcast. Uh, I'm 21, not very old, not very <laughs> young, but uh, just love Jesus. And um, I'm just looking forward to what we're going to talk about today. I um, pray that you guys are impacted. Um, and if you want to f- look for my podcast, it's called Passion Mind of Voices. I'm on most um major uh, platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, so yeah, I'm just looking forward to really discussing, <laughs> just talking about Jesus today. So. Amen. All right, so this is this is sort of a, the first time that we've ever done anything like this, so we're just kind of winging it here, but uh, some of the some of the stuff I'm kind of excited is you got like a little microphone there. Yeah, I got my lapel, so it's, I'm still learning, still getting new at it, but you know, it's, it's fun. <laughs> This is a this is a learning process, but what I've said in the in other videos is that it you know it's something that God wants you to do. He'll he'll turn it around and make stuff good yeah. out of bad. So um, without all ado, we're gonna take over and see what it let O'Darian do his thing, and then I'm, it's sort of like a live broadcast of a podcast. <laughs> so, <laughs> so let's see where it goes from here. <laughs> all right, here we go. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Passion Behind the Voices. I am so excited to be back with you all. Uh, I have my friend Mark Gussler, man Gussler with me, as I stated in my previous episode. But we're going to do a continuation of uh, Where is the Mantle of Elijah, the podcast I did about mentor, uh, mentors and the discipleship relationship between leaders and youth. And um, I really feel like it's something that we have to have more of in our generation if we're going to truly see the message of the cross continue to be um, you know, push forward and elevate and see the name of Jesus lifted as a banner. Uh, so, you know, I just want my friend Mark here today to kind of introduce himself and tell you a little bit about him and, or, you know, stuff like that. So. Well, thank you for having me on your show, yes, sir, first and foremost. Uh, Any time that I get to talk about God is an amazing time. Uh, my name is Mark, and I am, I just celebrated actually my 46th birthday oh, wow. a few days ago. <laughs> and, uh, I am I am uh, excited to have this podcast. Uh, but if you if you would like to check me out, I'm on YouTube on Mark Gutzler Man Gutzler. Uh, you type that up and go in there. Uh, I just started actually. April was my first time of doing my first video oh, wow. of this. <laughs> uh, last last year, the last couple of years, I've I've sort of done little things with the kids, like we re- reenacted the Aladdin movie. Oh yeah, yeah. So I, I have that up there as well. But as far as like doing a YouTube on, you know, or I read, I read scripture and talk about it, I've only been doing this for like three or four months. So well, you guys have to check it out because I I watch the videos. I'm like, man, this is this is awesome. Like, you know, and just meeting this guy, he's like always lit up with happiness. I'm like, dude, how can you always be this happy? But then I realize it's because you have Jesus, and that's the most important thing. That is the most important thing, and it is nice to know that there is something more than just what we you know the here and now yeah that there's sure. actually a future for sure yeah. so i mean without further ado i mean we're just gonna pretty much dive in but i just ask that you guys just be um open to what's going to be said and hopefully and prayerfully it really changes your life and there's some things you can take away from this um, episode so uh with that being said welcome to another episode of passion mind the voices so usually that's what I do, guys. I just introduce what I'm going to talk about, and I add, you know, I usually add some uh, music to it to kind of set the, the tone for the episode. Uh, so yeah, there we are. Very nice, and it doesn't pick up what we're talking about no. when you're when, Once when I you stop like it, this. It okay, because yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know if I should say anything <laughs> or not. Like I'd pick it up. <laughs> and I usually add because I uh, so with the app that I use for. A podcasting you can also add a uh, you can add sponsors and you could also get uh, 
your episode to uh, monetize so you can get paid for it um, as you do it as long as you add sponsors to it so that is awesome yeah, how that works that is pretty cool <laughs> so then i'll just add a sponsor section in there and there we go and i'll save it and uh if you don't like wh wh what's a good um sponsor site or app to go to so usually they'll they'll uh, give you some like when you're starting to give you sponsors that you can mention in there as long as you mention it somewhere in there like they'll you know they'll give you maybe a script or if you want to make it your own you can do that and then once you place it in there when people listen to listen to it however many listeners you have that's you know that's pretty much determines how much nice i'm sure actually like once you go in and start working through the process of, of setting up a podcast of your own like they'll they'll work walk you through oh, yeah, it like i'm sure, sure it's follow the leader type of thing very user friendly very that's, user -friendly. <laughs> that's that's awesome so yeah it's gonna be yeah it's, it's great so. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome right, so, um, yeah so i guess we'll kind of get get started here um let me start this really quick so what, what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna start the actual podcast episode while we are recording and so yeah it, it's like a live recording of a podcast so yeah we're still learning but it's <laughs> yes it's, <laughs> So guys, today, as I said, I'm with my friend Mark Gutzler. Um, we are actually doing uh, a, a live broadcast of the podcast. So it's something new, but we're learning. But I am looking forward to what God is going to do through our conversation on today. So, um, you know, last time, the last episode, we... Uh, So if I have some distraction, I delete it and I have to do it over again. That's oh, good. So, and, and this is a live recording, so yeah. <laughs> interruptions. So yeah, it, <laughs> sometimes my kids interrupt me <laughs> while I'm doing the, it's, the hey, fun. It's got to work with it. <laughs> yeah, yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> All right. So guys, like I said, I'm with my friend Mark Gutzler, man, Gutzler. Uh, so yeah, uh, we are actually doing a live broadcast uh, while also podcasting. So it's a new process. We're learning. But I really feel like it's it's going to be the start of something new, and he will be on more episodes to come. So just be looking forward to it, and uh, I really enjoy talking to this guy. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, the the episode, the previous episode the, that I, I talked about, where is the mentor of Elijah? And um, it was not it was not the last episode, but it was the episode before that, and I kind of touched on the uh, discipleship relationship, um, the relationship between a mentor and those that are following um, and I gave a few examples of what that looks like um, the main example being Jesus Christ himself which is the greatest example that we could ever follow and uh, Elijah and that was the example that really sticks out to me because of the simple fact that Elijah um, knew that his time was coming to an end and God instructed him to go anoint someone to take his place um, and he found Elisha working he found Elisha doing something um, that was going to prepare him for the ministry that he would walk into and uh, a lot of a lot of times these days we have we see people with ministries we see people with anointings and, and things over their life that they really don't pass on and then the younger generation is kind of left wondering what can we do to uh, make a difference what can we do to continue to spread the name and fame of Jesus Christ um, so you know Mark and I really we kind of discussed that uh, and I really like this perspective on uh, th that topic so I really wanted to just kind of sit down with him today and really get to know more uh, what he has to say about it so uh, you know you, you're, you're absolutely correct I believe that um, that's something that's really missing a lot today is mentors um i i can't really tell you 100 percent why that is um but it's happening it's happening before our eyes and we see a lot of these things happening to the younger generation because i do believe that one of the biggest aspects of it is there's no mentors and like you said in your video last uh a new a new young believer gets to a certain point and then where do they go after that exactly. what, what is there so uh you mentioned in the podcast that they fall back to where there was they fall back to what feels familiar and what gives them peace 
and a lot of times that's life on the streets which doesn't turn out very good it, it does not and it's you know, I've, I've heard the story of so many people that, like, if I only had someone that I can look up to, if I only had someone that would be there with me, letting me know when I'm doing wrong, let me know when I'm doing right, giving me some type of feedback, you know, with my life, it would have been much better for me. And, like, I personally know uh, individuals that have made a step in the right direction towards, like, getting to know Jesus, and then it's like, they follow the initial, you know, steps to salvation, and then after that, it's just like they kind of go back to their own way because they lost that enthusiasm, that encouragement, that, you know, they lost, they, they had no one that really showed that they believed in it. They felt like they were doing it all on their own. And, you know, sitting here, hearing you talk about that and then remembering what you said in your last, the first podcast you did. Um, first, you know, I said I celebrated my 46th birthday recently. Um, I haven't really been, I mean, I'm, I'm a mentor to my kids because they're with me every day, but for me to actually go out and to find some other person to mentor, some other young person to mentor, um, I kind of fall in that same category as all the rest of the older generation, you know, um, I don't know if it's just that our lives get way too busy. I know even when I was younger getting, well, I was great, my brother was a preacher. So I was kind of raised in that environment. He was a Baptist preacher. Uh, so I kind of had him there to fall back on. But he left He left the house whenever I was five years old. So there were times where I didn't have him. Uh, but I had my friends at school and my friends. And I would get so far into the movement of Christ. And then all of a sudden, oops, you know, let's go knock some mailbox off with, you know, let's go yeah. right around and take a baseball bat to some mailboxes and stuff. And. And, and at that time, it was just so fun, and I, and I felt included and, and at peace because I was with people I thought that were my friends. And I'm like, you know, this this is going to go places. I'm going to do things. Yeah. Uh, and I'm lucky I never ended up in jail from it. <laughs> Thank God. Knocking <laughs> people's mailboxes over, and that's... So would you say it's mainly because you felt like you kind of lost the person that you looked up to in the morning? Um, I'm not saying my, my brother was there for me, mm -hmm. but like I said, he moved away. He moved out of the house when I was five. So it was like from five on, unless he came for a visit, because he moved to Texas when he first moved out. So unless he came back to Missouri to visit, you know, I just had the older the older gentleman in my church, if it was a Sunday afternoon, boy, they would mentor you all day long. <laughs> but they, they would, you know, they wouldn't step out of their safe box. Yeah. Like on a Wednesday or something, or let's say like a Tuesday. Because they had their work and their families. And I'm, I'm really glad you said that because another thing is um, I, what I found to be so true and yet sad at the same time is that uh, we feel as if the discipleship thing only lasts for a certain amount of time. But something that I really learned is discipleship lasts for a lifetime. You know, oh, it, you, you have to be, it all, it's all around the clock like let me pour into you because this is a life commitment I don't just start something and then I drop you at the moment I feel like you're you're able to do it by yourself you're so true on that and to give you kind of like an outside example of that is that um, well quite a few times like even in my adult life my mom has yelled at me in school <laughs> me, and she's like I'm never gonna stop being your mom yeah. I'm, you know you I see you do something wrong I'm always gonna tell you about it uh, that's how discipleship I feel is being a mentor sure. is that you take someone on and it, it's not until they get to a certain age or it's not until you know the minute they they take someone on to be a mentor you drop them you don't ever drop them I mean it's like look look at Jesus like he took he took it, us on right and he's not going to drop us just because I'm 46 years old exactly it's, it's, a, it's a lifetime and then and then the, 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 the lovely thing is he even left something for us to make sure that we're able to continue in this world he said i'm going to bring i'm going to send you a comforter that's going to comfort you but he's going to also help you he's going to be my spirit living with you that's going to guide you through your life he's going to guide you through um every challenge every every uh every moment of sin that you go through like i'm going to help you through that you're not by yourself so he left that idea that you won't be alone you know and even in the culture that they lived in the, the discipleship relationship was a thing you found someone and the mentor like the the, the disciples didn't go look, looking for 
the disciple maker. It was the disciple maker going to look for someone they could pour into. I mean, quite frankly, you don't. If you don't know what to look for, it's going to be tough to look for it. Exactly. So it's up to the the older generation, and what I mean by older is those that are already in Christ and already know, mm -hmm. and they're. When you get born again, you do start out as a little baby. That's how it's referred to. But then you grow into an adult exactly. with Christ. So the ones that are in an adult with Christ, you can actually see the, the part where he says the bell, the bell will be lifted. Mm -hmm. You see things. <laughs> I did. I started seeing things. It scared me to death, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but, but I started seeing things like you you know when you get across someone that they're new. You kind of you kind of get that feeling with them. Like I know that they're in Christ, but they must be new. I'm sorry, Mr. Excuse me. And uh, that is that is such an I don't know. Like, well, to look at this, uh, if you look at First uh, Corinthians 11, verse one, it says, "Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ." Wow. And I know that we 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 looked at that before <laughs> we started the podcast, and you actually picked that one out. You were like, I like this one, and I like it too, because this, this that one sentence kind of just says, uh, a good mentor teaches, but he also tries to leave an impression that they can look back on later. Exactly. And say, oh, well, my mentor's not with me right now, but here's what he would do in a situation like this. And I, and, and the, the, like the part that I really love about this scripture is, first of all, Paul, just think about Paul, how he was not one of the original disciples. He had to ha actually have a, a, an encounter with Jesus Christ himself to know what he knew about him. And then he goes on to, to, to train Timothy. But even Paul knew that he wasn't there at all. Like he wasn't, uh, he hadn't reached perfection. He was still striving. So what he's saying here is be imitators of me as I'm looking forward to Christ, because I still have to be made perfect. I still have to, to strive to get to that next place in Christ. But as I'm doing that, you look at me. You you watch what I'm doing, you imitate that because I'm imitating Christ. So as long as your disciple maker or the mentor, the person you're looking up to, is following Christ, you're free to imitate what they do. Don't try to, it, you know. It, in layman terms, it's like follow the leader. Pretty much. If you look at it that way. Pretty much just follow the leader. Follow, and we all know how to play <laughs> follow the leader. You know, so we played that as kids. But, you know, you look, I'm learning from Christ. He's teaching me. Mm -hmm. And then as, as I learn with me being your mentor, you look at me of how I'm acting toward things. Exactly. Exactly. And, like, sometimes I feel like, God, I can't mentor anyone because I'm not that far along in my walk with you. But I heard a friend tell me, um, he said that you don't have to be years and years ahead of who you're mentoring you just have to be a few steps ahead. at least w something they can look up to like you know someone they can look and say okay that's where i want to be that's where i want to get to but you don't have to be like so far ahead of them that you have to like reach back and be like and, and it feels like a burden so to speak. where you have to pause your learning so yeah. they can catch up to you yeah exactly yeah. so it, it it's okay to have someone that's, you know, they may be just a few years younger than you. They may be older than you, but if they're not mature in Christ or they don't know as much, it's okay to say, hey, this is what I've learned. So now let me share, let me share this with you. That's how, like, I mean, <laughs> I mean, you, you talk about age in Christ. Like, I know I just celebrated my 46th birthday, but really I'm like 15. <laughs> if you look out, all I am, because there's, there's, there's things that, you know, um, you get so far and then your relationship with them that you pull you pull away yeah and do do your own thing and then you're like i'm too far away and then you come back yeah yeah man it's it's that's that's a whole other thing to talk about but <laughs> <laughs> and then like it's like you know we were talking about being born again it's, it and it talks about it it, it, um, it says you like so just imagine a baby's born they don't yet have a they, they're not able to speak like language like they speak you know gibberish right they have to hear you talk exactly they have to learn from you know what they hear around them and they they don't have knowledge of pretty much anything they can't eat solid food just yet they have to have milk and things like that they they have to grow they have to grow into those things and a lot of times people are born again they get that experience and then they're just left to like you figure it out on your own so it's like 
then they meet another believer who may be mature in Christ, and then they try to push this stuff on them. Just like this is what the Bible says. This is what the Bible says, and they're they're not ready for that yet because they not, they haven't went through those, through those beginning stages of. I mean, you can't take Christian. you can't take a six month old baby and and throw him in a pool and expect him to swim. Like you know, there's steps there's steps that has to be taken. Exactly. You know, uh, and and you're right. You have to be. Everything that you said about you have to be there. You have to let your light shine for someone else to see basically and So many so many times I've noticed that is missing today Even people that I know personally You know, it's like I don't know I don't know you go to church and then those at church that are supposed to mentor over you They think that you should be at a certain spot <laughs> already <laughs> yes <laughs> and it, it's like um it's hard because also you know along with them expecting you to be at a certain spot they also um and this is you know like i've said the time before like i respect the older generation i, I respect those who are leading me and, and doing their best to set an example for me um but it also gets gets kind of hard because along with them feeling like you need to be at a certain spot already they also look down on you as you're too young to be able to instruct me or tell me anything about Christ because I know more than you. And First Timothy 4.12 says, Let no one des despise you for your youth, but set, the, uh, set an example to believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, in purity. So you don't have to be 40 to 50 years old. You don't have to be 35. You don't, you don't have to be, you know, mature in age, so to speak, to know a lot about Christ. It's about the time you put in studying His Word, praying, allowing Him to teach you, allowing Him to fill your spirit with the knowledge of Him. Because you can be like Jesus. He was 12 years old, teaching in the temple. And they're looking at Him like... And, and these are grown adults He's teaching yeah, to. Yeah, they're like, what is He talking about? <laughs> I must be about my father's business. What are you talking about? Who, what father's business? <laughs> what, what business is this here? Like, what Joseph you is your father. Like, we know <laughs> your dad. Like, he's like, but I must be about... Like, he had a greater goal in mind. Like he knew his mission even when he was 12 years old man that's powerful even yes. even just talking about it just now and, and i know that we're, we're reading scriptures the one right below that one which is hebrews 13 verse 7 remember your leaders those who spoke to you the word of god consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith and that just kind of <laughs> reinstates everything that we've been talking about the bible is just man it, it touches every subject like there's nothing that you can have questions about that the bible does not answer oh this this is our i call it my the, the handbook <laughs> you know you hear people say i wish life had a handbook mm -hmm. well here it is the bible <laughs> <laughs> i heard the uh, acronym for bible uh basic instructions before leaving earth i'm like okay <laughs> wow <laughs> basic instructions yeah man it's just like it's just Wow, yeah, and uh, I know that bes you know besides trying to imitate, uh, what I did is I just started putting my uh, when I really didn't have anybody else to fall back on, mm -hmm. I just started reading up on Jesus and who He was and started imitating that. And one of my favorite verses of all time is First Corinthians thirteen thirteen. I don't know if you do you know what that one is. I'm trying to think of it in my head. I, I know it's. Just, just, just say it. Just go and say it. <laughs> there, are, there are three things in life that will endure: faith, hope, and love. And the greatest of these is yep. love. There we go. That, that is my favorite one. <laughs> because if you and and I'll, I also have a um, a saying that I've said in other uh, YouTube is that if you can leave someone smile, that, that being positive is just as contagious as being negative. Mm -hmm. And if and if you can spread that positivity in the room like I think things are a lot more enjoyable learning when there's positivity involved oh, for sure, for sure. For so sure. I mean you know me I'm silly acting in here at work <laughs> like you know it's like when I'm doing stuff I like to see people smile I like to make them laugh because I believe that that releases a substance in the brain that makes it even easier to learn for sure and as you were talking about uh, reading about Jesus and looking at Jesus uh, that's what we're called to do like you know it's good to have uh, humans that you imitate but it's 
more important to imitate Jesus because it says, the Bible says, you know, let this mind be in you that was also in Christ Jesus. Which doesn't necessarily just mean, like, you know, uh, in so many words, it just, it, just, it just means when you go into a situation, when you go into a problem, if you run into a person, just think about what would Jesus do in this situation? How will I imitate Jesus? Because if you become a, a, a disciple of Jesus, that's, you know, that's the greatest... That's the greatest mentor you could ever have. Jesus Christ himself, like, leading you and guiding you. Like, imitate him. His 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 mindset. Like, and a lot of people say, well, I'm not God. I'm not him. I can't. But it's just like, be, strive, to, strive to get there. Because one day, you will be as he is because you're going to see him as he is. And he's going to make you as he is. So it's just like... <laughs> exactly. It's, it's definitely... Um you know, something to think about when you see how he reacted to being turned over to uh, the Pharisees and the, the, the people that were hunting him down and how he reacted. And, and it was Peter the one that tried to cut Peter, one of the guards' <laughs> ears off. And then Jesus is like, those who live by the sword, die by the sword. Put the sword down. Even when he knew it was his time, that's how he acted. And that's, and it, you know, life, life is tough. You know that it's an understatement saying that and people use it all the time but it's true you know you get in situations almost every day how are you supposed to handle those situations it's, it, it, it's hard at times because we're human like i said we're fallen humanity we have you know anger we have urges we have temptations and things that lead us away from him but he says as long as you have a heart of repentance like look at david david fell so many times he even you know, one chapter he's saying, kill all of them. And then the next, next he's saying, creating me a clean heart, oh God. Renew a right spirit within me. And God, you know, he yet says, David, you're a man after my own heart. Because you live a life of repentance. Because you try your best to live and meet that standard that I'm calling you to live by. Like, you're, like Paul said, I'm pressing forward to the mark. And I, I also believe it worth noting here is that a lot of, I've heard a lot when I start talking, about Jesus to some people I hear them say I can't you know I, I have some stuff I have to work out first like I'm too <laughs> oh, yeah I've heard that um, I, I can't I can't go as I am now I have to get I have to you know cleanse myself or whatever and it has sort of a come as you are mm -hmm. it don't matter what you've done because what you've done has been done before but just come, come to me as you are. As the Bible says, there's nothing new under the sun. So. <laughs> there's not. <laughs> and that's the thing, like, I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, even me at one point, I was just like, God, I'm too dirty. Like, I can't come to you. I've, I've committed so much. I can't come. My hands are dirty. Like, why am I coming into the church lifting my hands knowing that I just did whatever? And he's just like, come to me anyway because if, once you come in, he's going to clean Allow him to clean you up. Allow him to make you new. Because what, what a lot what a lot of people don't realize is that it's it's really not our responsibility to save anybody because we can't. Exactly. It's our responsibility to give the testimony of what we've experienced. Exactly. And and, and Paul knew that. He said, I, I you know, I become all things to all men, that by all means I might save some. So he knew that he could not save all. He knew he had he didn't have the power to save anybody. But he knew that if I set the example and I show that I'm imitating Christ and my love, my grace for people, eventually they will go closer to him. And you know, you, you could get tripped up. A lot of a lot of people are like, Oh, I, I got things in my life, how how can I be a mentor? But like I said, it's it's you're not saving anybody. That's that's Jesus' job. Exactly. You know, what you're doing is you're you're living the guy's life according to his will and purposes and those around you are seeing that. Mm -hmm. And I think I think you quoted it earlier. Um, let your like letting your light shine before people that they may see it. Um, and it says that they may see and glorify your Father which is in heaven. So like it's like I'm allowing His light to shine through me, but they're gonna glorify God because of the light that they see shining through me. It's just like you know I'm not the focus of attention anymore. Like if I'm mentoring you, I'm mentoring so you can get close to Christ, not close to me. I mean, what does it say? You're just like you're just like a flower here today, gone tomorrow. Just like a it's that's powerful, man. I mean, it, <laughs> wow, man, this is, <laughs> guys. Look, this is the first 
first time doing this together, but man, it's, it's already so good, man. I'm just, I am shocked with time. <laughs> I tell you, and there'll be more. There'll be more of these times for sure. For sure. Oh, uh, that is that is pretty awesome. So, uh, my question for you, it just comes to mind, is um, what is some advice you would give to like um, the younger generation of uh, young men, young women that um, really feel like they're. Um, at a place in life where they really don't know where to go and they're looking for someone that has some experience like you know more experience than they had like what, what advice would you give them to kind of encourage them to like, continue to move forward and continue to the the first and foremost thing that I would like to give as a d advice would be to um, just get a hold of a good copy of a Bible mm -hmm. a King James version is, is is one that most people trust um, and start start reading it at the same time try to find a local church in your area and uh, you don't have to become a member at first you know and just remember that um, if that if that church starts judging you or saying stuff leave find another church because their job is to take you in no matter who you are and there should be mentors there if you if you can't find mentors and you're still stuck in a place uh, keep keep reading the Bible keep reading stories about what Jesus did in certain situations. Yeah. I would definitely say like when you're you know looking for a church, looking for a place where you can call your home, uh, look for a church that lines up with what you read in the Bible, with, with what you see Jesus talking about in the Bible because that's very important, especially in your growth with Christ. You want to make sure you're surrounded by a body of believers that's you know they're preaching and teasing the word of God. Not just my emotions, what I feel is right. You know how I feel about people or my opinions because when it comes down to it the only thing that matters is are we being like Jesus that's the most important thing being like Jesus um, imitating his every move learning from him the, per the perfect mentor, <laughs> the perfect mentor. <laughs> that you know and, and like I said uh, at the beginning my brother was a Baptist preacher so he did have a lot of those moments that I could turn to him and ask questions but there was a lot of times that he was away because you know he moved away when I was five so um, who did I have was you know I I either went my own way or the times that I read about Jesus like oh would, this is what Jesus would do you, even before that what would Jesus do became popular yeah. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah, I think another thing would be not like you know, and even if you can't read King James, there's a whole lot of different translations. I would definitely say, you know, make sure you, you're careful about which translation, but also know that there are uh, versions that are easier to read, easier to understand, and don't feel bad about that because it would, you know, get the best understanding that you possibly can. And something I like to also uh, throw, throw people's way is that before I do my YouTube, like a lot of times I just go on Google. Mm -hmm or any you know yahoo or whatever platform you like and just type in you know what does the bible say about whatever you're looking at anger exactly. lust money greed whatever it is that you're having problems with and they'll bring it up and there'll be scriptures like the scriptures that we read today in today's podcast was from that <laughs> and they, they give you a lot of them so yes <laughs> they give you quite a bit and i mean it's just you know just it's awesome, man. Just like, you know, if I can give any more encouragement, to just continue to just strive for more. Strive for greater. Never be satisfied with where, where you are. Never feel like you've arrived at your final destination because you haven't. You know, there's, there's always room to grow. And the moment you stop being a student of the Word, a student and a disciple, is a day that you pretty much stop growing. Like you don't want to be stagnant. And, and everything, like, even when you're being poured into by people, make sure you're pouring out to someone else. Because that's how it, how it continues. Because if, if not, you're just going to be stagnant, not growing, you know, not going any further. I think you probably just answered my next question. <laughs> but I was going to I was gonna ask, what device do you have for the the older generation? For the older generation? It, as far as their, their walking with Christ. Um, that kind of the same question you asked me but but for the opposite like um you know just kind of giving some background uh 
I've always been like the type type of kid that wants to hang around the older people and I observe and watch, which is why like I'm interested in a lot of, you know, just talking to older people, like knowing their experiences. Uh, I would say, um, first of all, be, um, continue to fight the good fight because we're definitely watching the older generation for their strength to see how they made it through the hard times that they went through, how they held on to Jesus through everything that they've seen, everything they've experienced. And also be transparent. Don't be afraid to show your vulnerabilities to the younger generation. Like we need, we need to know that we're not the only one struggling with things. We're not the only one that, that that are going through things in life because it helps to know that I have a firm uh, grip on someone who has been through the test of time, has gone through life, has wisdom. You know, because with experience comes wisdom. Exactly. And. Uh, also understand that the reason why a lot of you go to social media, they uh, vent to social media and let all their hurts out and stuff on, online and things like this is because we don't feel like we, we can trust the older generation to give our hurts and pains to and allow them to figure out how to, you know, use it and help us to grow in the right, right way. And lastly, I would say to understand that this faith that you preach and you teach and that you've lived through understand that in this new generation it may look a different way it may sound a different way but as long as it has the same roots to it it's going to yield great results but our job is to stand on your shoulders and peer over to where god is going to take us next absolutely absolutely and and like I said, every time I hear something, I'll probably go back and listen to this <laughs> again and then get something new out of it, <laughs> you know. The Word of God is just living and breathing. It's just like, you can always go back again and be like, man, I didn't catch this the first time. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Especially, usually when I go back and read, listen, watch my videos, you know, there's something in there that I'm like, that's, you know. Yeah. <laughs> even even though I'm the one that did it, I didn't get that out of it. And it takes you to, like, you go back home and you're just like, let me write this down. <laughs> let me go into this. Let me go into that. But it's just like, yeah. but yeah, for the older generation, that would be the advice. Um, what would you say for those who, um, I know because life can get busy. Um, people have children, they have wives, they have a lot of things going on. How would you, you know, what is the way you found to, like, be balanced in their area? Um, well, there's, there's always those moments in time where you can like go watch TV or go for a walk or something. And those are the moments that I just kind of try to fit in my time with God. Like if, if I'm going to go on a walk, then I will do my praying and stuff when I go on a walk and it's not just a walk. Um, if I go down to watch TV, maybe I'll, I'll read a scripture and I'll meditate on it a little bit and I'll do my praying before I turn on the TV. And it's. You know, you can all you can always find time yeah, here and there. Always. <laughs> and it's, I, I know sometimes a lot of people would disagree because <laughs> they got two or three jobs, you know. But there's there's always even that time that you're driving to work that you can just have that conversation. Yeah, and that that's one of my favorite times when I'm driving. I'm just like, man, this is quiet time, <laughs> good time, good. Like, <laughs> but like that being said, I'm glad you brought up like time. Um, how the Bible says, you know, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. And I think, you know, a lot of people when they think of treasure, they think of, you know, mo uh, money. You know, they got, you know, that specifically money. Okay. I mean, I, I think of it. You think about <laughs> pirates' treasure and stuff. <laughs> yeah. You know, like, <laughs> but like, you look at it, like, what do we have here now that is so valuable? It's time. You can't get time back. Once, so, it, once it's gone, it's it, gone. It's gone. Like you, you said, you can get money back. Yeah, you can get money back. You, you rent a vehicle. <laughs> you can buy another vehicle. But you know, time, but you can't get that back. It's like investing time in the right things, in the right moments. Like making sure your time is used wisely. Because as you said earlier, like we're here for a short time. We're not here to stay. We're just passing through. We're visitors, just like like a flower here today, gone tomorrow. <laughs> and our job as disciple makers and people that you know the younger generation can look up to are those who may be a few steps behind us our job is to make sure we're taking someone along with us i mean also also remember is that uh god's will is, is going to happen whether it happens with you or someone else so if, if you fall out of that mentorship he's going to have someone else do it 
<laughs> it's going to happen whether you do it or not. So it might as might as well be you. And that's that's a scary thing, man. It's like God doesn't want to pick someone else, but it's like he he's not gonna force you to do anything. He he won't go against your free will. It's just like who's available. He looks for availability. You know, he looks for those who say, God, like I surrender my life to you. Whatever you wanna do through me, you know, use me. So, um, guys, this has been a great episode. This has been a wonderful and mighty episode. I'm so glad you were on today with me. That that is, I look forward to this all week. It's I'm like, I can't, <laughs> I can't. You know, what are we gonna talk about? What, yeah. is, what, what you know, I, I didn't realize it would take 30 minutes, but maybe, yeah. I, I mean, it's it's good. And you just start talking about something good, it just lasts. A time, time is, like I said, time is here. And <laughs> Man, I, I, I really hope you guys uh, enjoyed it. I uh, hope that it really um, spoke to you, that you continue to strive for greater. And um, pray that God will send someone to your life that could, you know, mentor you and also find the person that you can pour into. Um, but yeah, like, just the main thing of this all is to just make sure you're growing in God and not remaining in the same place where you started. You know, love God, love people, and just continue to allow yourself to be like, filled with His joy, His love, and poured out to others. Any closing comments of Martin? Uh, I would just say that this is this is. Uh, I hope a lot of ears hear this. I you know, and then God's going to use it in His the way He wants to use it. Absolutely. I, I hope that getting together like this, a lot of ears hear it because I think that that's something that really needs. A, a lot more of my generation including myself we need to step up to the plate be more mentors to not just our family but outside and it starts with conversations like this where you can be open and transparent and just learn from you know, and i feel like we've done that today so <laughs> <laughs> yes but guys uh, so thank you all for tuning in um i'll be back uh soon with another episode but for now we're just gonna um you know keep going but you know god bless you all have a wonderful day, a uh, wonderful week, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Passion Behind the Voices. Well, that was awesome. Thank you. Thank you again for allowing me to, to yeah, be on that. Bro. That was awesome. awesome. Thank you for allowing me to be on your YouTube oh, channel. Oh, anytime. Dude. I'm looking forward to this again. Yeah, it's, I'm going to go back and watch this for sure. I'm going to get some yeah, stuff. Yeah, definitely. Like, <laughs> and, I, and I'll learn too. This is something like, I didn't realize I said that. <laughs> you know? Well, anyway, this has been a, a presentation of Mark Gutzler, man. Gutzler, I'm glad you could join me again today. And please don't forget to hit that like button. And uh, just give that big old bell a push if you want to receive more of these videos. Thank you again. Until next time. Bye-bye. Well, hello everybody. I am Gutzler Man, and thank you for joining me today. In this episode, we're doing a special Halloween edition. We're going to be answering questions like, what does the Bible say about ghosts? What does the Bible say about body possessions and